Here at Simpliviation, our goal is to show what it's like to fly on as many airlines as possible. And we're serious about that. In pursuit of this goal, we've flown to North Korea. We've flown to Somalia. We've even been to Pennsylvania. And today, we're ticking off another airline from our list, flying on the largest carrier of Afghanistan, Kam Air, from Istanbul to Kabul. If you're curious about obscure airlines like this one, or simply want to see what any airline is like before you book a flight, make sure to subscribe to Simply Aviation, where we host the largest collection of airline reviews anywhere on the internet. We've got plenty of other exciting videos coming up, so I'm sure you won't regret it. But let's focus on Afghanistan for now. Come Air will be our 239th airline covered, and one that we've been trying to fly on for years. So without further ado, let's get going. Aviation geeks and frequent flyers, welcome to this new episode of our flight review series, Brutally Honest. Today's trip won't be a review as much as simply documenting what flying to Afghanistan is like in 2023. After all, there isn't really any competition for flights to Afghanistan at the moment, with international connections only offered by the two Afghan carriers Kam Air and Ariana Afghan Airlines, as well as by two Iranian airlines, Mahan Air and Kish Air. Fly Dubai has recently also resumed their route from Dubai to Kabul, making it the only big international carrier to currently serve the country. Bureaucratically speaking, traveling to Afghanistan isn't all that difficult. A visa is 100 euros and is paid to presumably the old Afghan government, as the current one isn't in control of the embassies, and you'll have to sign a document acknowledging that your safety isn't guaranteed by anyone once you're there. And just like that, we're at Istanbul Airport, checking in for our flight to Kabul at the connecting desk. Getting our boarding pass was quick and easy, and we're off to our departure gate. Istanbul's new airport is absolutely stunning. Time and time again, I'm impressed by the sheer scale of the terminal building. However, it is an airport of long distances, especially because in contrast to most airports of similar size, Istanbul doesn't have any trains or trams to shorten the walking distances. RQ9910 to Kabul, that's our flight. And over there you can already see tonight's ride. Yankee Alpha Kilo Mike Echo, a 2000 build Airbus A340-300, which was originally delivered to Iberia and was passed on to Philippine Airlines in 2013 until it was withdrawn from service there in 2018, which is when Kam Air acquired the aircraft. Kam Air has a rather modest fleet. As of December 2023, they operate four Airbus A340 300s in addition to seven Boeing 737s, six 300s, and one 500, although three 737 300s are currently not in operation. Fellow air travel creator Josh Cahill did a video aboard the airline's Boeing 737 500 back in 2021, where he worked with the airline to arrange the first commercial flight in Afghan history to be operated by an all female crew. I highly recommend you check out his video, which is a stark reminder about how fast things can change, as this would be impossible in today's Afghanistan. We're not the only ones heading to Kabul tonight, with a single Airbus A310 of state-owned Ariana Afghan Airlines parked right next to us. Kam Air is not just Afghanistan's largest private airline, it is the country's largest airline, period. It is part of the Kamgar Group, founded by Afghani businessman Samarai Kamgar, which is the origin of its name, Kam Air. These days, the airline once again offers a fairly extensive network. Domestically, they fly from Kabul to Herat, Kandahar and Mazari Sharif, as well as from Mazari Sharif to Herat. And internationally, the airline offers flights to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Riyadh, Jeddah, Kuwait, Istanbul, Tashkent, Delhi and Islamabad as well as the occasional flights from Mazari Sharif to Istanbul and Islamabad, and from Kandahar to Jeddah and Dubai. Flights to Europe are currently not possible because all Afghan airlines are banned from flying into or over the European Union due to safety concerns. We don't have time to worry about safety right now though, as it's time to board our flight. Right, 
entering through door 2, we're in the plane's standard 242 configured economy class cabin. Khmer's website has detailed seat maps of their planes, including information as to which planes feature which. It shows that only one of their Airbus A340s still has a proper business class, with the other three, including ours, having had it replaced with a bizarre 333 configured front economy class section. In the standard economy class back here, the airline uses the Columbus seat model by Italian manufacturer Avio Interiors. We'll be in 30k on this 4.5 hour red eye flight from Afghanistan tonight. While the plane is almost a quarter century old, having been built in 2000, the cabin is in a phenomenal state. From what I could find, these seats must have been put in by Comair themselves after requiring the plane from Philippine Airlines, so props to Comair for having upgraded the cabin of such an old airline. <laughs> The CRT television in the center of the cabin is the only hint as to the aircraft's age. Each seat comes with an audio entertainment panel, which likely also offers an audio channel for the TV, although I'm doubtful Comair is able to make use of that system anymore. Adjustable headrests are installed too, just like coat hooks. There's also a high literature pocket, a standard tray table, and a regular seat back pocket. The legroom is astonishing, far above the average. And above the seats you will find personal reading lights. With that, it's time to get on with our journey and head out towards Kabul. Right after takeoff, the crew handed out bottled water. In general, I have to say the crew was phenomenal throughout the entire journey. Less than an hour after departure, dinner was served. Come Air offers two choices on this flight, either a dish with chicken or one with beef. This was the beef dish, which came with a generous serving of rice. Alongside the hot main dish, you've got all of this, which isn't a tray by the way, it's just a big plastic box. There's a cold bread roll, a little piece of cheese from our home country of Austria, some kind of pastry with raisins, and a peck of honey, as well as a large piece of sponge cake. To drink, Come Air offered water, Coke, Sprite, Fanta, various juices or tea, but alcoholic beverages are not offered on Come Air, of course. This meal clearly shows that Come Air tries its best with the limited possibilities they have. With how few people travel in or out of Kabul these days, it's likely not economical to have any reusable components in the in-flight meals, such as trays or hard plastic dishes. But that didn't keep Come Air from offering a large, tasty meal. After that, the cabin was darkened, so we could get a couple of hours of sleep. This was very easy as the flight wasn't even close to full. The lavatories are pretty standard, although I love how they dotted the walls with Khmer's logo. Here and there you can see how the airline does think about the customer experience, as stupid as that sounds. When it comes to airlines from countries which are not on most travelers' radars, and we have flown on dozens of them, 
they usually don't give a damn because you're traveling to a place where they're the only option. The service they're offering to bring you to a place hardly any other carrier is willing to take you, there's simply no need for a good experience. And yet Comair has phenomenal crews who are incredibly hospitable, courteous and professional. They offer a tasty meal which was way larger than I thought. The cabin is in a much better state than I anticipated also because they procured new seats when they took on the aircraft. And even now before landing they once again handed out bottled water. If, and that's a big if, you come to Afghanistan, Kam Air is certainly a good choice. As we're descending into Kabul, we'll end the video a bit differently than we normally do here at Simply Aviation. We'll break our own rule and add a brief non-aviation part, so stick around until the end. Welcome to Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan. After the chaotic, tragic scenes that took place here in 2021, the airport returned into an operational state with the aid of Turkey and Qatar. Traveling to Afghanistan these days somewhat bears resemblance to traveling to North Korea. It's possible, certainly not your average vacation, and a trip during which you have to watch what you say and how you behave. And while that way it is safe for your average privileged western traveler, the quality of life has deteriorated for almost everybody in the country. Choosing to travel to places like Afghanistan always comes with a moral component, because whether you want to or not, you always indirectly support the ruling government by going there. But when you don't visit places, how can you truly understand them? And for us making videos about aviation, how can we say we cover aviation worldwide when we don't actually stay true to the worldwide part? At Simply Aviation, our mission is to show what it's like to fly on as many different airlines as possible, and that mission does not yield to any one country. So with that, I hope we were able to give you a useful glimpse into what flying an Afghan airline is like in 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you are curious about airlines, not just from Afghanistan, but virtually every country on Earth, feel free to take a look at our YouTube channel where we have over 600 reports and reviews of over 200 different airlines and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss the many upcoming videos we're currently working on. We also want to extend special thanks to all those of you who support our work financially with a channel membership. If that's something you're interested in as well, take a look at the members tab on our channel page right here on YouTube or click on the join button right beneath this video with memberships starting at just 2 euros per month which is just 24 euros per year. As a thank you to our channel members, they get access to our Discord server where we can help with any and all questions you might have about air travel, get the occasional early access to a video and vote on which videos to put out next. Whether you are a sponsor, a subscriber or simply stopping by for this one video, thank you very much for watching and coming along today. I'll see you again soon for a new video and until then, safe travels. Okay.